Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A mother of two gunned down in her driveway. The man wanted in her murder, now in custody. But why was he out on bond? We're going to begin with a Macomb County family remembering a 16-year-old boy hit and killed while walking home from work. Off the top at 11, Jamari Barkley was killed one week ago tonight at 16 Mile and Harper in Clinton Township. The driver never stopped. Larry Spruill is live at that intersection tonight. And Larry, this is just absolutely heartbreaking for that family. Good evening, Kimberly and Devin. Heartbreaking indeed. About 60 people met right here at this very spot where he died. Take a look. You can see his name spelled out in letters. Teddy bears and candles are over there as well. Now, I spoke with his parents. They tell me the last couple of days have been tough and they really just can't believe that this happened. This is tragedy. This is just tragedy for our family. Heartache and disbelief can be heard from family members of 16-year-old Jamari Barkley Thursday night as they gather for a prayer vigil in his honor. Loving and caring person. Like, like a proud father, Mariko Thomas speaks highly of his son. Don't really ask for much, but he'll give everything he got. He wasn't outspoken, but he said what he had to say, but he said it in a very polite and respectful manner. Selfless and respectful, just two characteristics Jamari's parents describe him. They say he's an animal lover and love to play video games during his spare time. Loving young man. Smart. Very smart. They're now holding on to those memories. Barkley was hit and killed here at this intersection of 16 Mile and Harper in Clinton Township on November the 11th. He was 16 years old. He was coming home from work, minding his own business, so he didn't even see it coming. Police said the driver who hit Jamari kept going. That's a hard pill for his parents to swallow. Right now I'm speechless because I'm still in awe that my son is no longer here. You can go home and do whatever you do on a day to day. We don't have that anymore. And police are still looking for that driver tonight. If you know anything about this accident, you are asked to call them. Meanwhile, there is a GoFundMe account set up to help out. If you want to donate and information is on our website. Click on Detroit.com. We're live in Clinton Township tonight. Larry Spruill, Local yeah, 4. Just heartbreaking. Larry, thanks. Well, tonight, parents voicing their concerns with how the Bloomfield Hills School District is handling racist incidents at the high school. Parents attended tonight's school board meeting to express their frustrations with the district's response and communication. I can't believe that there were direct threats made against black people at the high school to kill all and you guys did nothing about it. And then I find out later that there's threats that all the black people should be killed. I can't make a, a credible assessment if my children are safe. What should I do? That's the change. The complaints come after a number of incidents and threats over the past week. The district has apologized and is promising change while police investigate the threats. City of Detroit, as part of its deal with Amazon, will get a brand new transit center at the state fairgrounds. Question tonight is what it's going to be and whether any of those buildings on site can be saved. Mara McDonald live at the fairgrounds tonight. Mara, Amazon moving full steam ahead, but there hasn't been much movement on the transit center. Well, Devin, that's because they're still trying to figure out exactly what this is going to look like. Yes. Is there going to be a new transit center on the old state fairgrounds? Yes. What is it going to look like? Are they going to be able to save any of the buildings here? Well, depends on what plan they go with. Take a look. So our focus is has always been to have something great for uh, both the passengers uh, and the drivers. What council will be voting on is a state of the art transit center, which saves the dairy barn and turns it in to a partially enclosed terminal for DDOT and smart with bathrooms, a warm space for riders to wait, as well as other amenities, a far cry from what's there now. It also saves the facade of the Coliseum. The city did a feasibility study to see what buildings could be saved. In a letter to council, Preservation Detroit supports the plan to save the buildings, but wishes more structures like the riding Coliseum could have been included. The original plan for the transit center had none of these amenities and demolished 
all buildings. Its price tag was $7 million and council approved it. The amended plan is 18 million, saves structures, but has yet to be voted on. The council tabled the issue this week, saying it has concerns about bus emissions. We're trying to understand what the, uh, uh, the issues are or the questions about the emissions. Uh, there were a lot of uh, environmental studies that were done uh, regarding the Amazon facility and the truck traffic that's going on there. There's not an increase of buses, so we have buses that go through the area now. If the amended plan gets voted down, it means the original $7 million plan goes into effect and none of the state fair structures get saved. Back here alive. So right now you've got plan A and plan B. There is no plan C on the table. Council is expected to take up this issue next week, possibly to a vote again. The city administration would like to see ground broken out here on some sort of a transit center starting next year and having it completed by this time in 2022. We're live on Detroit's North Side. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Thanks for that update. Six people hospitalized tonight in a violent two car crash on Detroit's west side happened around 430 this afternoon on Cloverdale near Oakman. Police say the driver of a sedan was speeding and slammed into a pickup truck. The force of the crash sent the truck into a utility pole, nearly knocking it over. Two people in the truck and four people in the sedan are stable at the hospital. The FDA is expected to authorize both Pfizer and Moderna boosters for all adults tomorrow. That decision could come ahead of an afternoon meeting of the CDC's advisory panel. So far, at least 11 states have already expanded booster eligibility to all adults ahead of the federal green light. Here in Michigan, Governor Whitmer is urging anyone over the age of 18 to start making appointments for a booster shot. A man wanted in connection to the murder of a mother of two is now in police custody. Wayne County Prosecutor's Office is also addressing why he was out on bond after being charged with domestic violence against the victim. 40-year-old Andrea Tucker was shot and killed in the driveway of her east side home yesterday morning after dropping off her kids at school. The person of interest is David Hammond, who has been out on bond since being charged with abuse against Tucker. Now, she recently reported to police that Hammond was stalking her, said she had uh, ring camera videos of him in her yard. The prosecutor's office tonight says since the person in those videos could not be identified, bond was not revoked. Detroit Police Chief James White also addressing the case. This is a tragedy not just for her family, uh, which is unspeakable grief and tragedy for them, but this is a tragedy for our community. Enough is enough, uh, and, and, and we all have to be sick of this. Uh, this. This type of violence is just absolutely unnecessary, and we are going to be relentless in the pursuit of those who victimize our community. Chief White says they were able to arrest Hammond thanks to tips coming in from the public. We expect to learn more tomorrow about the attempted abduction of a high school student in Ferndale. This all happened yesterday, about a mile from Ferndale High School, while the student was getting gas between classes. She's now back with family. Police say two people are in custody. The Ferndale Police Department will reveal more information at a news conference tomorrow morning. Nearly two dozen seniors forced from their apartments today by this massive fire. It started around noon at the Rolling Brook Senior Living Facility in Algonac. Firefighters battled heavy winds while they were trying to contain the fire. It's believed to have started in a trash can outside the complex. The fire spread quickly. Residents had to leave their belongings and get out. I don't even have my purse. I don't have my phone. I don't have anything. I've seen smoke. So I just come back in my apartment and out the front door, I didn't bring nothing. Terrible. I lost everything. We all did. They did because the building is a complete loss. No loss of life, though. The 23 seniors living in the complex were relocated to the Lions Club nearby for a temporary shelter. Well, this may come as little surprise to people who had issues with Michigan's unemployment agency during the pandemic, but a new report finds errors at the office cost taxpayers billions. An audit found the agency processed 5.4 million unemployment claims during the pandemic. It paid out $39 billion, but nearly 4 million of it went to people who were not eligible. The Auditor General's office blames senior management. The agency's new chief says changes are already being made. Some snowflakes in the air tonight. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrew is in the. Uh, we got. Is this a sign of things to come here? 
Well, actually, we're waiting to get some light on you, Andrew. That's what I can see. <laughs> <laughs> the snow there we go. The the light. There we go. <laughs> well, guess what? The snowflakes that are around, well, they're a little bit more disorganized than when you join us at 6 o'clock. But as they go away, the sky's clear. But you know what that means? Temperatures drop. Cold morning at the bus stop, but drier temperatures will be in the 20s. Any more snow for tomorrow or this weekend? I'll enlighten you on that. See what I did there? Coming up. <laughs> How bright. But first, a fast food employee caught on video throwing hot coffee in the face of a customer. Are you okay? I am now, but when she threw it on me, it's hot. What the customer told officers in the immediate aftermath and how Tim Hortons is responding next. 